So I've been given the unenviable task of in the last session, while we're over time, to give an overview of quite a large research team. Uh, so I'm quite slowly spoken, particularly in afternoon lectures. It usually takes me about 10 minutes to assemble my notes and begin. So what I'm going to try and do is jump between a few highlights. And in addition to this, I've also presented this to the industry forum quite recently and also presented to the medicine and manufacturing team. So today what I want to do is highlight a couple of the studies and a couple of the projects that are sort of coming to fruition now and really that we haven't presented as often um, and that have been really taking shape over the last few months. So these are basically snapshots that have been provided by our investigators over the past, uh, past uh, basically over the summer or the past six months. Uh, this is the manufacturing team. It's led by myself and Gavin Walker. We have a lot of collaborators, both in terms of large pharmaceutical companies, uh, analytical instrument providers, uh, SMEs, uh, the CDT, which you've heard a lot about in terms of the projects and the scope of that project as well, and uh, also EU uh, consortiums. Uh, what we want to do in this uh, platform is to try and make pharmaceutical manufacturing more efficient. We do that across three platforms, hybrid processing and automating process design, continuous and miniaturized manufacturing, and the development of advanced manufacturing techniques. Um, we do this across a number of modalities. So the manufacturing team probably has the broadest set of pharmaceutical modalities that we look at. We have developing advanced, uh, advanced synthesis methods for RNA or oligomeric uh, therapeutics. We're looking at advanced biopharmaceuticals in addition to drug substance, that's synthesis, synthesis of pharmaceutical reagents, and also formulation. So not a good task to try and go through this. We have a significant number of investigators. I just want to highlight uh, the newest investigators, Elizabeth Topp, who is the CSO at NIBERT, an international expert in lyophilization and formulation of biopharmaceuticals, and also Jessica Whelan, uh, an expert in biopharmaceutical processing, who has returned in recent years to UCD and has joined and has just taken on a project in the area of uh, cell cryopreservation for intensification of biopharmaceutical processes. And that's our most recent PhD to start in the uh, manufacturing team. There's a list of papers. I'm not going to go through them all in detail. These are some recent ones. We've published uh, 74 publications to date. It's actually increased since I, I compiled this, 20 of which are cross-team collaborations. We're very active in collaboration of all teams. We've seen examples today already of collaborations between medicines, uh, molecules, and manufacturing, in addition to uh, medicines and manufacturing and the development of novel uh, therapeutic delivery systems, ionic liquids, and another, a number of other systems. Very happy to announce some recent awards in Frontiers of the Future, which is recently announced, which is why we've seen so many projects in this today. Vivek Renata, developing factory in the box, or for personalized products, based on emulsion-based or very small-scale manufacturing. Uh, Iskani Jimenez del Val, his dial sugar project, looking to do a personalized or very highly controlled glycosylation of monoclonal antibody therapeutics. Uh, in terms of uh, the next generation of researchers, uh, David Madden getting an award for uh, being, t some of these are embargoed, which is why they're redacted. I, <laughs> I'm not positive that they're uh, allowed to be discussed, so I won't tell you exactly which award he got, but it's one of the main ones for early career researchers. <laughs> Uh, Luis Pedre is going to talk a lot about uh, the formulation of nanotherapeutics. Uh, he recently had a large infrastructure award, which again, I believe is under embargo, uh, so he can discuss that if he wishes. And Abin Z, who I met earlier today, has moved from a postdoctoral position in this team into a, a joint industry position via the SFI uh, for, uh, fellowship um, team. We have significant commercial engagement. If we take this iteration of SSPC and the previous one, I think we've worked with most of the large pharmaceutical companies globally, in Europe, uh, domestically in Ireland, and in the United States uh, directly. Um, the most recent uh, project we have set up is Jessica Whelan, our newest uh, FI in the center, but also uh, collaborating with a longtime uh, collaborator of the center, Canti Process Technologies, to develop a project on uh, image anal analysis-based uh, creation of streams for biopharmaceutical production. Uh, there's also been commercialization activity in Emmett O'Reilly's group where they were developing Chrome Watch, another biopharmaceutically processed technology. It's a PAT device for downstream pharmaceuticals. 
In addition to that, uh, there's been a significant collaboration between Boston Scientific with multiple uh, investigators across multiple teams here in UL. Uh, in addition to this, we're moving more aggressively into ATMP, or advanced therapeutic modalities. Uh, myself and Elizabeth Topp are involved in setting up an mRNA vaccine lab uh, in Nybert as part of an expansion of the facility, which is going to go live next year. So this is computer generated. This should be real next year, hopefully. Um, and this, the groundbreaking on this is, uh, or the groundbreaking ceremony at least, is in September. In addition to this, Jessica Whelan, uh, addition, she's been quite busy since she joined the center, has developed a professional certificate in cell and gene therapy and vaccine manufacturing recently. So we do a lot of industrial outreach. Um, I'm not gonna go into that due to the time constraints. The most recent example would be uh, the Science in Schools initiative where uh, Jessica did an article on applied versus theoretical research. So a highlight recently, and I believe this will be expanded on in the next presentation that Emmett O'Reilly sent on, um, is the development of multi-component fixed dose combination therapies via spray methodologies. This is trying to develop uh, dosage forms that are uh, containing multiple APIs. And in this case, uh, an achievement recently published this summer, I don't think it actually has a DOI number yet, is the systematic approach to use to control a polymorphism as a function of droplet size using spray drying as a continuous method of manufacturing. And that's gone into Crystal Edge Com recently, something we haven't uh, presented to date from this team, and so something I wanted to highlight. Uh, another update from Emmett O'Reilly would be the use of PAT in downstream biopharmaceutical uh, processing. This is a commercialization activity in terms of Chrome Watch, which is partnering with Janssen Biologics at the moment, aiming for a spin out in 2023. Uh, this is just an update from my group. One thing I particularly want to highlight that uh, Sarah discussed in the intro to the session was we organized a joint FDA event, uh, an MCRC workshop, work, uh, workshop to try and push for regulatory change in multi-component APIs, which are being developed across the teams in SSPC. Uh, I'm co-editing uh, an edition of Journal of Pharmaceutical Science. Uh, so I'd like to encourage anybody that has papers in this area to submit uh, to this edition, which will be co-published with the FDA, and we're doing a perspective at the moment in this area. Uh, another uh, co-publication with the medicine team was again by Michael Stoker, a postdoc, where we looked at integrated purification, where we purify our API and then take it directly to formulation. This was done by agitated bed crystallization. I'm sure Michael will be around for the barbecue and delighted to discuss this further. Uh, something slightly unusual, and that was just published by an associated PhD, Samir Shinti, in my group, in collaboration with Dermot Brown, is the use of magnetic nanoparticles for biomedical applications. So you've seen a lot of uh, crystal structure determination projects and crystal engineering, um, and crystallization process engineering, I should say, programs. This was a collaboration to take these types of tools and apply them to uh, magnetic nanoparticles that can be used to release uh, medicines at site-specific locations in the body, in addition to bioprinting applications and a number of other things. Uh, this is quite a lot more difficult than previous work we've done on things like uh, polymorphism. Uh, and really what we thought we would do is apply our usual modeling and toolkit that, to figure out what was going on. This turned out to be uh, not something that we were able to achieve in Samir's PhD. However, we were able to figure out that we could control the particle size perfectly, which should have given us a boost in magnetic heating. Uh, but what we did find out is begin to underlock the mechanism that yields to the, the stochasticity of these processes. And this was using high resolution TM in collaboration with the University of Illinois at Chicago, and basically showed the introduction of phase boundaries within these nanoparticles. Well, I shouldn't say phase boundaries, phase imperfections within these nanoparticles uh, reduces in very, very significant paper. Uh, very, very significant differences in performance in identical solutions. Uh, finally, um, uh, well, uh, the next update will be Jackie Cooney's work, where she's developing a novel protease inhibitor that comes out of her microbial culture work that has been shown to be very uh, effective, at least in uh, the academic studies for the treatment of sepsis. They've now applied these to a number of other uh, immunological conditions, uh, for example, psoriasis, and this is currently another uh, commercialization activity within the team. 
Uh, finally, I'd just like to highlight something that was presented at length by Rowan Flood, and I believe he may have a poster, and he's certainly here to talk about this. Um, his work in using protein frameworks with thiocalixerine and zinc to essentially make large co-crystal-like structures except for protein complexes. Uh, so applying the sort of crystal engineering toolkit to proteins, which is very exciting and has a lot of blue sky uh, applications in manufacturing of biopharmaceuticals, we, we hope. Uh, Ronan won a prize very recently and also has just published in Crystal Growth and Design. Uh, so that's it. I hope I didn't go over, but thank you very much. <laughs>